We've got a Jalen Brunson injury coming up in today's show. As Tom Thibodeau has said, it is a knee contusion for Brunson, and everything was negative, talking about the x-rays. He also said, we'll move forward, and we'll see where he is tomorrow. He said that yesterday, which means today is tomorrow, and I am anticipating coming up in a couple of hours, we're going to get a brand new update on Jalen Brunson. But we have quotes from Tom Thibodeau, Dante DiVincenzo, as well as Josh Hart, and we have some information on Julius Randle to get to. But first, I got to make sure everybody watching today's show is subscribed because if we get any Jalen Brunson news we are going to make a video for you guys as soon as possible so subscribe turn the notifications on and let's pray that it's a good news coming around the corner today's Knicks Now video is sponsored by 8 Sleep invest in the rest you deserve. Go to 8sleep.com slash chat sports and get $200 off the pod cover. We'll break down 8 Sleep more coming on in today's video, but let's dive into it. Josh Hart was asked about Jalen Brunson and what he thinks about the injury that he's going through, and Hart said, I don't think it's too serious when talking about Brunson and his potential knee injury. Also, Dante DiVincenzo, one of his best friends and college teammates, said this about Brunson. I asked him if he was okay, and he said he'll be fine. And that's everything to me. I don't worry about Jalen. He's one of the toughest guys in the league. Whatever it is, he's going to bounce back. He's tough as nails. And even though Dante DiVincenzo is given a positive injury update and Josh Hart has given a positive, positive injury update, I just can't get my hopes up for this. Not saying I wish Jalen Brunson was hurt. I think we all know that not to be the case. But I can't get the image out of my mind of Brunson flailing in the air, untouched. I know there was some contact with Hartenstein prior to it, but pretty much untouched from the angle we saw from Isaac Okoro. Flailing in air, immediately grabbing that knee, unable to put any pressure on it, and having to walk off uh, with his arms around two other Knicks players. And then his ankle just goes limp, which maybe goes to the injury that the one Twitter doctor said where it might have been a nerve injury. I think anything is on the table. I'm just praying it's good news for Jalen Brunson as the person and the player for the New York Knicks. Tom Thibodeau also said this about JB, quote, this was following the game last night and the big win over the Cavs. They just did an x-ray. Everything was negative. I guess it's possible that he plays Tuesday against the Hawks. It's a knee contusion. And everything was negative. So we're, we'll see where he is Monday. Anytime someone goes down like that, you have concern. But then he felt a little better. He had the x-rays. He was examined by the doctors. And so that is good news. I think it's important that Tim sa Tib said he felt a little bit better. And I understand that they went through an x-ray and they said the x-rays are negative. But this is a knee injury, not a broken bone, not a bruised rib, not a chipped elbow like OG and an OB. This is a knee injury, and as we all know, you need to have to go under an MRI to see if there's any sort of ligament damage to that knee, and I think that is everything, and really the only thing that New York Knicks are wor New York Knicks fans and as well as people inside the building are worried about. Is it a torn ACL? Is it a torn patella tendon? Is it a meniscus injury? MCL, PCL, LCL, whatever it is. You're not going to find that out through an x-ray, and I actually am anticipating that an MRI may be going down today if there already hasn't been what so far. I also don't want to be rude when saying this, but I do not trust the New York Knicks medical staff, and I don't think it's actually the medical staff. I think it's a part of the PR department and the way that the New York Knicks kind of spread the news from the medical staff. Remember, they told us OG and OB had a day-to-day -day injury, and then he missed a week, and then he had surgery, and he's been out for a month. So I don't really believe the medical staff all too much when they tell us the injuries, considering they said at halftime Jalen Brunson was questionable to return. He was never going to return. So I don't believe them in the slightest. I also feel like last night still does not feel real. I mean, just watching that game last night, it kind of <laughs> – Patrick Seatman said this to me when we were walking home. He said, that had a little bit of like angels in the outfield type of vibes. Jalen Brunson goes down. Josh Hart's making threes everywhere. Dante DiVincenzo catches fire. Miles McBride plays perfect basketball. Boy, Bogdanovich made some big shots. Josh Hart to pretty much ice the game. It's a step back, sidestep, follow away three as the shot clock bleeds. I hope he's wrong, but it did not feel real because that was the best win of the season, and he did it without Jalen Brunson. 
and Julius Randle and Mitchell Robinson and OG Ananobi. And you went on the road and you beat the Cavs. I know they didn't have Donovan Mitchell, but we didn't have our top four players either. Incredible, incredible game. Hard to kind of look past the injury, though, at this point because we all know if it is a serious injury, what that means for this season. I do want to talk to the people, though, that are kind of blaming Tom Thibodeau for this injury. And I understand you could point to the fact that Brunson is one of the league leaders in minutes played in the year of 2024. But he came off three days of rest, and it was essentially a non-contact injury unless we're going to the thesis that it was because they bumped knees. Um, I don't think that's fair to Tibbs. I don't think that's fair to Jalen Brunson. And I honestly almost think it's disrespectful to compare this to a Derrick Rose type of injury and to blame the overuse on this. I don't think that's fair. Um, can we please stop doing that? Let's show Jalen Brunson some love, though. Let's get the good vibes in the air. Good vibes only. Positivity is what we're preaching on today's show. Hit that thumbs up icon and drop a JB in the chat so Brunson can feel the love. Coming up next, we've got a positive injury update for Julius Randle when talking about when he may come back and what he was doing prior to last night's game on the, on the court. Today's episode is brought to you by 8Sleep, the high-tech solution to your age-old sleeping issues. 8Sleep's Pod 3 cover slips right over your mattress, bringing heating and cooling tech that keeps you comfortable and sleeping deeper for a better, more restful night. I love 8Sleep because it has totally stopped my night sweats. I'm a guy that needs the room to be extremely cold or I'm going to be sweating a lot. And thanks to 8Sleep, I don't wake up sweating and get a better night's sleep. The pod cover will improve your sleep by automatically adjusting your bed's temperature based on your individual needs. The cover can be added to any bed like a fitted sheet. And also, it allows you and your partner to cool or warm your side of the bed as low as 55 degrees and up to 110 degrees. In addition to keeping you at the perfect temperature all night, the pod also tracks your sleep and health metrics on average pod users see their sleep quality improve by 32 percent after just a month on the pod go to eight sleep.com slash chat sports and get 200 dollars off plus free shipping on the pod cover by eight sleep invest in the rest you deserve with eight sleep pod that is eight sleep.com slash chat sports that information will be clickable down in the comments and description of today's show all righty, let's close out today's video with a Julius Randle update. Tom Thibodeau said this prior to the Cavs game last night. Julius Randle has started to take light contact, but nothing with a player just yet. And this is a good step for Randle. We saw him prior to the game on ESPN working on the floor at the Quicken Loans Arena. And as you can see, he has worked through a very, very heavy sweat. So that is a good news for him. He's starting to work hard, and he is a guy that is going to need to be healthy if the New York Knicks are going to want to make the playoffs. This was Tom Thibodeau on Julius Randle. He's making really good progress, so we're hopeful that it'll be soon. You want to make sure that, the, that medically the doctors feel good about it. He feels good about it. And then once that happens and he's doing just about everything, he's taken some light contact, but nothing with the player yet. So that'll be the next step for Julius Randle in his rehabilitation. We also had a New York Knicks viewer at the game last night in Cleveland, and he told me prior to the game when Randle was getting ready to go and go through his on-court workout, he said, quote, Randle looked really good pregame going through kind of his workout with the trainers. You saw how much of a sweat he was in. He's starting to put in work. We've seen pictures of him and Johnny Bryant getting ready to go at practice. I actually think that Julius Randle is getting closer and closer to a return as the days go by. I believe that he may be actually be able to return prior to the playoffs and maybe have a week or two under his belt of game action. At the end of the day, all I, all I want, and I think I speak for everybody watching this video, I just want to see this team healthy. I want to see a starting lineup that features a healthy Jalen Brunson and DiVincenzo and OG and Randall and Mitrob with I Hart and Josh Hart and everybody else, Boyan, Alec Burks, Shake Milton, Don, uh, Miles McBride. I want to see all these guys healthy on the floor. I do want to give a huge shout out to the Knicks though last night. This was the type of game where you could have quit. You saw your captain go down in the first 47 seconds and you maybe have played your best game of the season against the Cleveland Cavaliers. 48% from the field, 41% from three. But the most important metric to me was you held the Cleveland Cavaliers to 98 points, one of the best offensive teams in the league. A big reason for that was Josh Hart and the way that he affected the game on both sides of the floor. Josh Hart, 
I mean, what, what can you say about the guy? 13 points, 19 rebounds, 10 assists. He was here, he was there, he was everywhere, and he put the icing on the cake of the win last night with the sidestep three in the corner to knock it down as the shot clock went to zero. Josh Hart was an absolute animal. I thought Presh Tachua gave you some good minutes as well. 14 points for him. Would like to see him be a little bit more aggressive on the glass. That way Josh Hart doesn't have to get you 19 rebounds. But as we continue to say with Presh Tachua, he continues to surpass any expectation we had for him when he was traded from the Raptors to the Knicks. And I don't know how he's not going to be a part of the playoff rotation. Isaiah Hartenstein continues to be on that limit, minute restriction as he deals with the sore Achilles, but he had another good game. And an underrated stat, one that we didn't talk about last night, eight assists for Ihart. He was really kind of in that Joakim Noah role last night, creating offense off the pass, four players, backdoor cuts and everything. Ihart had another good game. Dante DiVincenzo has been struggling as of late when it comes to his shooting percentage, but he got red hot as soon as Jalen Brunson went out, and he carried the Knicks offensively for times and uh, for stretches on stretches. 28.6 rebounds, 4 assists, 50% for the deck, 43% from 3. The big ragu was cooking. Miles McBride came in to try to save the day, and what I love about Miles is he's going to be Miles McBride. He knows he's not Jalen Brunson, but he's going to play his game, and he played it really well. 16 points, 5 assists, great defense on Garland. Garland had some big shots in the fourth, but overall, Miles McBride, might have been your MVP last night. I thought Jericho Sims in the limited action gave you good minutes as well. He was aggressive around the rim on the glass on offense and defense. Had three offensive boards last night. And just the athletic powers that he has always makes him a guy that pops off the page when you watch him. Boyan Bogdanovich was brought here to score the basketball, and he did that last night for the Knicks. You knew when Jalen Brunson went out, someone was going to have to step up and give you some clutch buckets, and Boyan did that. In the second and third quarter, he carried you at times. Had a couple of nice fourth quarter buckets, missed two open threes in the clutch that I want to see him knock down, but I was happy with the way he was used and the way that he scored. Because look about it, think about it like this. He was one of six from three, and he was eight of 15 from inside the arc. He's not just a three-point shooter. He could score from anywhere on this court. Let's get the good vibes rolling, though, because we know what it is with Jalen Brunson. And if it doesn't get better, it may just get worse for this team. So hit the thumbs up icon. Every like helps. Good vibes into the universe. Make sure you are following me over on social media at Marshall Green underscore on Twitter. Same handle over on Instagram as well. Give me a follow over there so you never miss a thing when it comes to the New York Knicks. And we'll see you later. Let's go Knicks. Thank you.